Hi, this is Heidi Gaiman from ilovemyshepherd.com with video number four for casting stones. Today we're going to talk about everything there is a season autumn. So during these next four videos, we're going to go through literal seasons, autumn, winter, spring, summer, and talk about some of the biblical connections to each one. It's kind of for fun just to uh, dive in from a different angle than we normally would from scripture, but also for reflection on how God is in charge of all of those seasons, all those times, all those places that he has put those seasons uh, into the stars in the sky as they move around, as the planets orbit, uh, that that is under his control and under his care. Um, and there's more on that, how God is kind of in charge of everything in the last video, in video number three, if you missed that. So today, let's start with autumn. Autumn is so interesting. Let's let's get grounded in that theme verse, Ecclesiastes 3.1, when we talk about seasons. Ecclesiastes 3.1, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. There's, there's a season and a time for everything. So season can be very metaphorical and often when we're talking in Ecclesiastes, it is metaphorical. Um, there's a time to dance and a time to mourn. Those are seasons of our lives, a time uh, to be born and a time to die. Again, seasons come and go of loss, of change, of all of that. Um, and then there are also literal, the fact that God does, um, from the very beginning, set the sun in place to, to guard our days and to guide our nights. Um, he also put put the sun right in the middle of our solar system, which we know now, like a couple thousand years ago, uh, that was not something people understood. The fact that the sun is at the center and we're all orbiting around it and that um, and the way that the earth turns on its axis and that creates our 24 hour days and then also creates our year. It's all super fascinating. Um, and there's those awesome people who have those vocations in science and life sciences and astrology. Um, sorry, not astrology. That's not true. <laughs> That's horoscopes and stuff. I mean, astronomy, um, who understand the, the, the way that God fixed things and um, how he balances uh, gravity and all of those wonderful things that he has created uh, for our sake, for the sake of um, his son coming for us and all of that to be set into place. So it's, it's pretty exciting to think about that literal stuff too of the seasons that God made. Um, and I think that he does give us a rhythm in that and that's really important that he does give us a time for resting maybe more in winter. And we're gonna talk about that when we get to the winter video. Um, and that he gives us a time for maybe productivity when the days are longer in the late spring and summer. Um, that sometimes the, the time of summer can be a time of perseverance because of the heat. Um, and depending on where you live, those seasons might be more distinct or less distinct. Uh, but there is a rhythm to it. Even in um, a lot of our students that come here uh, from Malawi, Africa, will tell me about their two seasons are really rainy, is what they call winter, and then dry season. And so that might be a different rhythm in a different area of the planet, but at the same time, there is that rhythm of some kind of season that God gives us. Not everything is four seasons. And that's fine. We're not, we need to understand that maybe there's, even in, within seasons, there's different perspectives to be had. Um, every culture isn't the same, and that's important too, but that God is still guiding it. God is still the one in charge of time and the perspective we have in that. So maybe we can just learn. Again, this is kind of fun. So what is your favorite season and why? That's something to answer on your own or in your group. Just contemplate what is your favorite season and maybe take a minute and thank God for what he gives you in that season and, and what he's doing in that season. Um, and then what's your favorite thing about autumn or about fall? If you particularly live in a four season area, um, you might see the leaves change. Or I remember when we lived in Haiti, one thing that I missed was pumpkins. Uh, we had, they, they called squash pumpkins sometimes and things like that, but it wasn't the same big orange pumpkins that you go pick and then you carve and decorate. It was very different culturally. And so those things might seem really silly, but, but God gives them as gifts. And um, it's just a cool thing that we 
relate, I think, to one another within those things that you have maybe your favorites of autumn or fall or what you've experienced of them. And then I have mine and, and that's something to share. It, it creates conversation. Uh, those are kind of easy questions we can ask one another to be able to be in tune to each other's likes and dislikes and things like that and get to know each other a little bit more as a group or if you're just in conversation with someone over coffee, you know, very non-intimidating. So I love those kind of questions. Um, so there's two parts to today's video. One is Lord of the Harvest. And so that's one thing that's really specific about fall or autumn. And even if you don't live in a four season area, just this concept of harvest is what autumn really is about um, when I say the word autumn. And so biblically, we're gonna see a lot about harvest and who brings in the harvest in particular, right? Part two is the process of loss and change. So often, when we speak of autumn, we're talking about a season where things are changing. Uh, leaves are changing color. Uh, crops are like maybe growing and then coming to a time where they're going to be picked uh, again back to that harvest idea. But there's a change, a process of it and loss. You know, actually even harvesting things is, you know, things that are dying. When we pick vegetables for them to be eaten, when we pick the crops, the corn out of the ground and all of that, um, we are in fact like ending that crop's life cycle so that we can ingest it. Um, so there's a process to that. It doesn't all happen at once. And we're gonna look at that and how that's really specific to autumn. So first, Lord of the Harvest, part one. God created seasons. We talked about that, I already mentioned it, but let's find some biblical grounding in that. Let's look at Genesis 1 verses 14 and 15. I'm gonna move my notes up so I'm not like looking around my camera like, what's going on? Genesis 1, 14 and 15. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. So seasons have to do with light, really, when it gets down to it. The length of the day, that's what, um, how we judge seasons and name them and all of that good stuff. Um, and then some signs, like some, what are some signs of autumn for you, um, whether you live where that's predominant or not? Even if you live um, Southern United States, if you are a missionary, or if you are a resident of a different part of the country, a different, I'm sorry, a different part of the world, um, pretend you're in the Southern Hemisphere even, which is very different from my Northern Hemisphere, you might experience um, a, what is changing, I guess, uh, during a certain time of the year for you when maybe the harvest is more prevalent. Uh, that's kind of that concept of autumn that isn't based just in, you know, me here in Nebraska. The Hebrew for seasons is related directly to time. So again, when we talk about seasons, we're really talking about time and what that looks like and how God gives us the rhythm of time in our lives. Uh, a time that is appointed is what the Hebrew is seated in. So it's appointed, appointed by God, designed by God, uh, created or set into place. Like when Genesis 1 talks about setting the stars in the skies, the light um, the sign, the season that is set by God. Um, now, I think sometimes people think of God as this giant God who set a clock and then walked away. Um, we know because of Jesus that he is an invested God, that he's still very present. And then also because of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit lives in us, that he's always there. We can always communicate with God through the Spirit, through Christ. Those are really important concepts when we talk about God setting things in you know, the course of time, because we want to know that he's still present in this time, not just in the beginning. And he is. Um, global warming doesn't invent the seasons, even if um, we are, you know, very much impacted by some environmental choices that we're making by uh, the environmental choices that generations past have made. Um, and we do need to steward the earth. God is still in charge of when the time will come for the new creation, when Christ comes back again and all of that. The sun doesn't 
uh, decide that, like when it's going to blow up or something. It doesn't work that way. Um, and we can look further, and we will over the next few weeks, into Revelation and things like that to understand the idea of a new creation on, and not just like Armageddon and it's all going to end. We don't believe in that because we have Jesus, and he's told us something different, that everything will be made new. Um, so we don't live in fear of that. Um, so God sets the season at the beginning, and he also rules the season that rolls around each year. You know, the, the dry and wet and the winter, spring, summer, and fall and all of that. Let's look at Genesis 8, 19 through 22 to understand a little bit more about where harvest, Lord of the harvest, remember is this section, comes into play when we talk about autumn. Every beast, every creeping thing, and every bird, everything that moves on the earth went out by families from the ark. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord. So this is right after uh, Noah sailed in the ark. It's the 40 days of rain have come and gone. And then it's time to leave, which took some time for the waters to recede, right? Um, and you can look all of this up in Genesis 8. Then Noah built, verse 20, Noah built an altar to the Lord and took some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man. For the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever strike down every living creature as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Wow, what a promise. So in what we were just talking about, about some environmental concerns that are very real, you know, we want our ozone to be very healthy and we want um, our weather to remain stable and things like that. God has promised that seed time and harvest, so planting, which is, you know, what we think of as spring, and we're going to cover that in a later video, harvest, cold and heat, even summer and winter, it says, Day and night shall not cease. So God will not take those seasons away. Doesn't mean we don't want to steward things well, but it does mean that we we know that God has promised that he will not forsake us and leave us, you know, to burn up in, you know, 130 degree heat that is unmanageable for humans to live in. Or, um, you know, we might have like ice ages even, but we're not going to have a massive demolishment of the entire earth. Um, through uh, weather that's, you know, always winter and never Christmas, which kind of reminds me of Narnia. No, we have Jesus. We have that promise of God that he's given. Um, and he has the rainbow. He reminds himself, which is really interesting of that. So we see the rainbow and we might think of God. However, God put the rainbow in the sky to remind himself, which I just, I love it. God does so many things that make him so relatable and so ever present. The fact that he he is um he doesn't need reminders but he gives them you know he he communicates with us and it's just a really beautiful thing it's comforting to know that the seasons will always be there um there is a broad spectrum of experience in seasons um summer and winter will come you know and spring will come and then the next one again and again that also reminds us that Jesus will come again we know it because we see the next season come just those reminders from God are really helpful and it reminds us that God remains constant in change when we do not and when other things in life do not um, rest is consistent through the seasons and I want us to look at that rest is consistent through the seasons while we're going to talk about the fact that winter is maybe a deeper time of rest uh, when we lived in Ohio in a congregation with a lot of farmers, you know, they were really busy at the harvest time, and then winter kind of backed off a little bit, and they had more time for family, more time for, you know, extra um, community time, fellowship time, or Bible study time, whatever. Um, however, God does grant rest in each of the seasons, and that's important. Uh, Exodus 24, verse 21. Six days you shall work, but on the seventh day you shall rest. In plowing time and in harvest, you shall rest. You shall observe the feast of weeks, the first fruits of wheat harvest, and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. So this is, you know, Old Testament. This is Jesus is our rest now completely. So if we never rested again, like, we would be okay. 
except that God did make our bodies for rest. And so we, he does grant us that. It's not so much about do, 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 make sure you get your rest. Although there is, you know, some of that in the commandments, we will never do it perfectly. We can remember that it's a gift of God to have rest on that, on that seventh day, to have a day of rest in each of our weeks and to also have a day of rest, um, a time of rest, if you will, um, when the harvest comes in, then it kind of signals, oh, it's time to rest, right? It's, it's hard for us to put into practice, I think, sometimes. Um, we can remember that when a busy season comes, so, you know, maybe you have children in school and you're running around, or maybe you're a college student and you're like overloaded with 21 credit hours right now, or um, maybe you are just really working a lot in your profession right now. You've been asked to cover some extra hours or or anything, or you have a busy caregiving time where you're trying to care for one of your parents or someone next to you. Those That season also will come to a close. That is how God designs life, and we can find some hope and some peace in that, knowing that God will bring the next season. So the harvest will come. That's another important thing. The harvest will come. We sometimes wonder, when we send the word out in particular, and we say, all right, Lord, I'm going to trust you with this. I'm going to, I'm going to say it to someone else. I'm going to tell them about Jesus. I'm going to give them hope and peace. I'm going to give them the word of God. Um, and time and time again, we feel like it, it's not heard or uh, it's embarrassing or the person even gets angry. Uh, we know from scripture that the harvest will come. And that is a really important spiritual reality. The fact that God says his word doesn't go out in vain. Um, that the harvest is plentiful um, and he will send uh, his spirit into that. When we share the word, when we do those things, that's part of his harvest. And the fall also reminds us of that because every year we see the crops being taken out. We see even like the crops that are a different weird season, maybe in January, the oranges are ready. Whatever, that's a reminder that God's word uh, is doing its job as well. There's a time to plant, Ecclesiastes tells us, and a time to pluck up. So a question for you is, what are you waiting for right now for God to harvest? You know, what when you look around you, when you think about your relationships, what are you hoping God is doing with the words that you're saying that are going out, with the time that you're giving to relationships or to um, certain, you know, maybe programs you've gotten invested in and stuff? And, and let's just take a time, a moment of prayer to say, Dear Lord, that is for you to harvest. I'm going to ask you to harvest that. And he is so faithful, so faithful. Look at Matthew 13, 24 through 30 for that. I'm not going to go over that right now, but I think that's something you can look at about harvest and how God does his work in the harvest. Matthew 13, 24 through 30. Um, there, there is an element there where we, we do have, um, I don't want to like throw out expectations because you know, God doesn't need us again. Um, but there is there is a um, element of responsibility in being able to share the word and to be invested in this life and in people. Um, and God does choose to use us. So letting him do that too is in that Matthew passage. So the second section of today's video is the process of loss and change. Um, look around you. When you think of um, the autumn, when you think of the fall, what do you see in your in your mind? You know, you might see bright and brilliant, colorful leaves. You might look at a certain field and the way that it looks. Um, but I bet you have a snapshot in your mind. And it, it might be from years ago. It might be from the present time, whatever. Um, but I can picture the, the field behind our house in Ohio. And I can see it in every season. You know, I can see the way it looks in the fall. I can see the way it looks in the winter. I mean, it would change a little bit, maybe depending on the crop and stuff. Uh, but we think about the trees that lose their leaves. You know, they go from red, yellow, or green to red to yellow to brown to nothing, right? To bare leaves, uh, bare branches. Um, think about the field that once was full of corn growing up or soybeans. Can you tell I live in the Midwest? or full of, you know, the cranberry bog, or full of oranges, um, and then it changes, right? It's a different thing. And so the harvest brings that loss and change. Like I said, there is a dying in there uh, for God to do the work of nourishing and resting and then bringing back again. 
So autumn always points us to change and that change is good. It's a time of mourning. You know, there is a change there and it's worth recognizing what we've lost in change. Uh, but then also that there's something new coming. Uh, there, when there's a loss, there's always something new on the horizon. That's how God works. Um, change is something we can't quite put our finger on sometimes. You know, just because the, the leaves are changing doesn't mean that we understand how it all works. And the same thing happens in our life. We can almost feel the change coming. Sometimes we can't see it until after the fact. Um, and we can't always quite put our finger on it. And so that's kind of important that we have to be able to, to let that be, to let God do his stuff and know that we won't always understand it. God is always in control. Um, and that's a really, really foundational truth in change. No matter what is happening, God is in control. And that's comforting. In Christ, our harvest always increases in the end. Um, so sometimes it feels like things are threshing, right? So you have the combines that go through and then all the crops come up and there's all this extra stuff left in the field. And then we have the, the seed that is the corn or whatever else, um, that is the product. Um, even that threshing, even that difficult stuff of like rooting up the land, rooting up that crop, um, it's plentiful in the end. That plenty may not look like we want it to. You know, it may not look like, oh, look at this. It's so luxurious. I, I just feel so much better and everything's great. No, sometimes it looks hard and even miserable and stuff. Um, but Ecclesiastes tells us that there's a time for that and a time for things to be made new. And God's going to do that. Um, you can look at 2 Corinthians 9, 10, and 11 for that. 2 Corinthians 9, 10, and 11. And that's about physical needs but consider also spiritual needs in there. What is God giving us and what is he doing in the threshing of life? Last, I wanted to look at the story of Ruth. Ruth 1, 18 through 22 to hear this. And when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her and she said no more, so the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. And when they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women said, is this Naomi? She said to them, do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went away full, and the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi, when the Lord has testified against me, and the Almighty has brought calamity upon me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, with her, who returned from the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. So this is that whole like Ruth and we always hear the beautiful like, oh, wherever you go, I'm going to go with you. This is their reality is it was hard <laughs> and they ended up going to a new land and it was a great loss. But when we get to the end of the book of Ruth, we see beauty. If you just go to the last chapter in Ruth and look at that and see what God does. Um, that's the harvest. The harvest doesn't always look the way we want it to. And that loss is very necessary at times to bring a different story to bear. And that's one thing that Harvest and Autumn is about, you know. So just some concluding questions. What is God working in your life? What changes have you been through recently? Um, or can you feel on the horizon, you know, what, what change is coming or what is he threshing you through right now? How would you encourage someone in the middle of discerning change and loss um, and how is this concept of seasons or the rhythm of seasons helpful and comforting? How is fall and autumn in particular comforting to you today? So it's a little bit about autumn. It's fun to think of. I can't wait to hear from you in the comments. Next video, we'll do winter, and I'll see you next time.